Cardiff Council got in touch and said, we really like what you're doing in Liverpool, can you come and do it in Cardiff? Come down and see what we've got and um, hopefully you'll find a building that you like and take it on. Went down to Cardiff, met up with the council, fell in love with one building, uh, it was always going to be uh, the coal exchange. Probably 60% of the whole world's coal was traded from this space. We really felt a pull towards because it was very similar to a building that we'd done in Liverpool which hadn't been used for 30 years, which we now call Dirty James Street. This is like a bigger version of that. I was taking on a seven million pound debt on a building I couldn't even walk around. The next step here, I'm gonna be in the basement. We've come along and seen it because I'm a little bit different than most. Uh, I'm an operator, I understand the process. I also understand about social platforms, but I really understand about how do you get a building from dedication into fruition as a hotel. I didn't know how serious the corrosion and the rot was within the building. Any buildings around the world, you say one of those words, it puts fear into any developer and they run. And there they are, all three, and I run towards it. You can see all the dry rot in there, you know. It's like a living organism, dry rot. Leave a window open and letting and let air flow, it would have prevented the extent of it. So if you look above you again, this is where we've had fire damage. I couldn't even walk around the corridors, I couldn't even see what was there because when you walked on the corridors, all the floors would snap. Yeah. Whoa! Oh. Cool Get me out of here. That's had some weight on it, that, to bring that down. The money we have to bring about is several millions more than what we estimated. And it's only when we've actually got round the building and saw the issues do we actually realise how much this building's going to cost. I can honestly say, if we never come in now, I think maybe another winter, we'd have brought the back of this down. It's like soft cardboard, isn't it? Well, look, it's sorry, isn't it? There's already evidence of the wall going from the outside, anyway. Well, this isn't just a tin of paint, is it? <laughs> this is the most challenging job I've ever been on. This is one of the better rooms. And this is where you ask yourself why it's Levin's doing it. It's the biggest. It's the worst condition site we've ever had. There was two floors being held together by the actual carpet that was on them. That's how severe it was. It wasn't just a walk in and think, oh yeah, we'll do this. It was a scratchy head moment and how are we going to do this? It's always a, a strange feeling coming down uh, from Liverpool to Cardiff. It's four hours of thinking about all the issues that I could face when I get here, the confrontation. You know, we've done great things in Liverpool, we employ a lot of people, we brought a lot of buildings back into use. And, you know, a few hundred miles away, you know, that counts for naught. And then we're coming into the city, but I'm not really known, um, not well thought of. In fact, probably the, the opposite with some people. There's a small community which has been involved in this building for a number of years, which are called Save the Cold Chains. We thought they're going to accept us with open arms in some ways because we actually give them the remedy to the problem. We're actually going to help them save the coal exchange. But what actually happened was, to our faces, they were telling us what we wanted to hear. You know, yeah, we're going to work with you. Yeah, this is a great idea. This is what we need to do. But then behind the scenes, they were building up a case really against us. They then started creating waves for us then with the local community. I think it was about Lawrence being an overner coming down here, stepping on their toes. It was rack and room for 40 years. You know, anyone could have come in and took it. Wilmot Dixon, they set up here and walked away. And they were a massive company. They walked away from it. I think that's too much, it's too much. And then you've got this crazy man called Lawrence comes down. <laughs> you don't have to, we'll do that. 
I think we're about the hundredth company to come along and have a look at trying to save this building. We are the only people in the UK who specialise in saving old listed buildings such as this that do not make economic sense and then turn them into a commercial vehicle which then absolutely looks after that building for another hundred years. So I've turned up at this building some four years ago albeit under prohibition notice and I shouldn't have been in, but I got in. I walked round and saw this amazing structure and thought this has just got to be saved. I just fell in love with the whole look of it, the feel of it. I suppose this was the benchmark for me really for taking it on. I'm a director of the Coal Exchange Limited who for some 10, 11 years ran this beautiful hall. And the one day, Lawrence came in with his team. Mike turns up in, in a little fiesta. He came around the corner like it was a scene out of the Sweeney on two wheels. He jumped out the car and he went, what are you doing at my building? <laughs> my family worked here with me, so this was a family business. I'd always sort of imagined that if a developer took on the hall, they would look at the Coal Exchange Limited as the incumbent operators. And suddenly, to my dismay, there's a developer who is also an operator. So I did have a few little qualms. So when I came in, I completely understood the importance of the building. So this building set the price of coal and minerals around the world for 80 years. So of huge importance to Wales and to Cardiff. So every person in Cardiff was telling me that the first million pound check ever written in the world was from this hall. The great thing about this hall, it is pure quality. It's 1880 mahogany and oak. When you come in the hall, you feel that it's lived and that things have happened here. You can feel the history. This hall goes back to 1886 and was once full of millionaires trading coal. When coal was at its zenith, probably 60% of the whole world's coal was traded from this space. They reckon 10,000 people a day were coming through this building in those days. You'd got this juxtaposition between the millionaires trading in here. And then it's the people who lost lives through this building, through going down the mines. So for me, this hall represented the haves, the people who earn millions from extracting coal from the ground, and the have-nots, the people that sent their children down the mines, knowing full well that they wouldn't live a full life. Its sort of second incarnation, really, was then as a music venue. Morrison, Manic Street Preachers, Stereophonics, Arctic Monkeys started their break tour here when no one had heard of them, etc, etc. Unfortunately in 2013, due to external problems, the building was closed. The rate of decay and degeneration is quite startling. It's, it's as if you've abandoned me, I'm giving up, almost. I think I know every drip that's in this building by now, uh, and certainly she's suffering. The biggest issue that this building faces is there's a huge gaping hole in the roof which is allowing water ingress corroding the building at a rate of knots. It's probably got a couple more years and then this building's lost for generations to come. Over a hundred companies have looked at it and haven't been able to come to a path that ensures that this building is brought back to fruition. I must have shown 20, 30 developers around here of different kinds and different statuses. The thing that struck me straight away with the Signature Living bid 
is that they were talking about not knocking any of the building down, that that was part of their model to restore what was already there. Over the top of that, I was quite up on the fact that no public money required, that therefore the old girl could be put back together quickly. To be able to take an old building which has got a GDV of 35 million and a cost of 42 million, from day one, a loss of 7 million attached to it. This makes it probably one of the most traumatic buildings that I'm ever going to come across. I just want to make sure that we do what we say we're going to do. I think a lot of people in Cardiff are going to be watching this building. Uh, they're going to be making sure that one of the most iconic buildings in the city um, gets restored in a tasteful way. People don't take on these buildings because these buildings can bite you so much you lose your legs. I'm really positive about the development taking place today. It's important to have a proper start to the work. Part of my concern in the past has been that if we can't see work starting, the building becomes more expensive to renovate, so less likely to happen, and potentially more damaged. So the start really matters to see a proper future for this building. I want to see the history preserved, but that means there's got to be a working future for the building too. And not just for me to be here, it's even more important, of course, to recognise the local apprentices who are starting the first one, uh, who started in the first week of the project, is here today as well. The best future for this place is if everyone looks to a future where it can be successful. And I'm looking forward to seeing Signature keep their promises to deliver local jobs, apprentices and a real future for this fantastic building. This is like a ghost one. So what's caused this is, like a group of people claimed that saved the coal exchange and there's obviously major leaks in the roof. Instead of trying to stop the water coming in, they tried to manage the water. And if you look up, see all the visqueen? They just visqueen the floors. So the water sat there, the weight of the water, it seeped through yeah. over years and years, obviously. Soaked the floors, took the structural strength out of them. The weight of the water just took it down. Obviously, it's happened on every floor. They're all weak once one's gone. Took the rest. So instead of fixing the roof, they just put the scaff open. It's probably made it worse, the fact that the water's just sitting there. They've left the weight on the floor. While it has been looked after by Save the Coal Exchange, the skill set there is limited. The funds are limited. Can you stick a plaster over a gaping wound? The building that we see before us today, the Coal Exchange, as stunning as it is, as amazing a building as it is, could actually cause my company to go into liquidation. So here we are, three months in, we've now got scaffolding that cascades through the middle of the building. So when I walk into a building, I straight away look for what that story is. This part of the building, which is going to be a bar and restaurant, is about the have-nots. This is about the miners. This is a direct reflection upon their plight. The main hall is about the haves, the guys who earned all their money out of coal, and minerals getting exported all over the world. We've had a lot of noise from a local MP, which has caused a lot of our investors from all over the world to not invest in Cardiff. By default, he's put us at risk. This building is the largest derelict building to ever be brought back into life, ever in Wales, without grant funding. We are doing our best, one, to get through the plan that we need in time, but also getting the the funds that we need, because we're actually open on the 28th of, of April. And the fact that we've got to re-support the whole building again, it just shows that this building actually is at risk and it hasn't really changed much from the day that we took it on. Apart from that, we've stopped most of the water ingress, but it is a worry. taken away 1,100 tonnes in the last three or four months. Well, previously we couldn't get through here because the amount of rubble and debris that was obviously come down or just being left or moved. I don't think there was one single area where you could have said it was an easy job. Everything was a problem. The last couple of weeks here have been horrendous. 
We had rising water coming through the basement. Asbestos everywhere. The roofs were gone. The floors were deteriorated beyond repair, so they had to come out and be replaced. There were structural imperfections, let's say, at the back, where we had to prop the building up while we were doing work for it. Joyce coming up, then you see, but there's all new steels above all new windows. My name's Steve Rees, yeah, I'm the site manager. I've approximately been working here for about two years, and uh, I've never actually worked in a refurb job as big as this. It's so labour intensive, we haven't got no, no room for machinery at all. Everything has to be physically manually handed into the building, out of the building. <laughs> the guys that we employ in, in Cardiff have been absolutely unbelievable. I walk into a room, I'm walking on top of bird carcasses, I'm walking on top of feces, really horrendous, awful stuff. These guys are knee deep in that every single day, pulling out the debris. They're the real guys that have made this work. 70% of the lads on site are local labour. Some of the lads have been doing 20 hour days getting the heads down upstairs and, and clapping on again. Probably the, the hardest working lads I've ever come across, they're just, they're unbelievable. Anything is achievable, so long as you have a group of people who are as mad as you. Absolute chaos, madness. So Steve makes out that I'm the mad scouter. Stupidity, and he still should walk away and cut his losses. I know it's mud fine, but that's what he should do. But he's madder than me. And the proof of that is he came down here to measure up a couple of windows three years ago, and he's still here. I slept in this room as a building site for five months to get us over the line. I was security as well for five months. <laughs> he calls me effing mad all the time. <laughs> Lawrence is a bit cuckoo anyway. In fact, he doesn't say I'm effing mad anymore. He just laughs at me when I walk up to him. <laughs> Give me five minutes to at least think about it before you smash my dreams to pieces. <laughs> a nice spiral staircase going up there. You get there's your door. <laughs> no, let's, let's, let's get the move. No, yeah, well, let's, what, let's get, get it all done. And yeah. Come back later. Okay. okay let's, get, let's get some pennies. What's happened there is I've just been blew out. <laughs> right. he's, he's given me a little carrot to maybe I might get to in a couple of weeks' time. Under no circumstances have I got any chance to come back to this once this is done. <laughs> you can't get down the stairs, so I can't look at any further. <laughs> Can we put the swim pool up there? <laughs> There's no tough end in the world than this. This is the hardest game in town. You can't take on dead election like this and think you can just bring it round unless you bring a team along with you that cares and thinks about the end goal every single day. You read up on the history of it. You get excited by seeing the changes in the building. I mean, it's hard work. You've got to be committed to the job, you know? You'll actually live the job. I find that pretty rewarding as well, to be honest with you. We're not an eight till four company. It doesn't work. You need everyone to put that little bit of extra in. So you've got to have people on your side. You've got to have great spirit like you have down here. I haven't seen a site like this. So sometimes it's mayhem. In the beginning, it was, it was quite dangerous, quite daunting to look at some of the areas, thinking it can't be done. And most of the floors are flooded. In some areas, it's like starting from scratch, basically. I think the team Steve's got here now is, you know, want it to work sort of thing. So, you know, if you want it to work, then you're going to be here till the end, aren't you? Well, I'm part of the build now. I'm not going. I'm staying. I've made a lot of friends in the area. We've got workers from Barry. We've got workers from the docks. We've got workers from the valleys. A lot of help comes down from Liverpool. How have the scouts been on the job? Yeah, they've been right, actually. We've, uh, we've got on quite well, to be honest. They don't consider themselves English anymore, so this uh, <laughs> the food has gone away now. <laughs> I'm going to say about Steve. Oh, Steve. Yeah, I love him. <laughs> Especially for doing this to me. <laughs> and we have the difference. Um, I would never come down to measure some windows. <laughs> he has given up his life for three years, away from his family because the building became that important to him. I'm going to stick this out to the end, because what an achievement. I live and breathe this building. There's nothing I don't know about the building. There's nothing I wouldn't do for the building. Let's see, watch this space. I think he bought into the way that I was getting beaten up online, the way I was getting beaten up by the press, the way that I wasn't good enough to take on, on this building. Yet, you know, he has been right by my side all the way through, ensuring that no matter what they say, come and see what we've done. I think because the force was so strong against us, 
we couldn't back down, so we had to push on twice as hard. So I come down here every single week. The problem is I've got to make sure that every time I come here that I meet every single issue that this building has. The stonework on the outside's got to be done, the garden's got to be done, every single room's got to be finished. I'll work on at the moment, it's 24-7. This is the biggest site I've ever had, but I've got nowhere to put anything. So the scary thing here is, is that we've got to six and a half weeks to go before the site has to open. There's still a huge amount of work still to be done. Luckily enough, this part of the building is going to be closed off. <sighs> but this side's going to be open. So we're just relaying the floor because we've got a big do in here on the 28th. And the whole of this floor is going to be taken up with 400 guests. So this puts a lot of pressure on us for the 28th. This was started two days ago, this. A bit of decor, a bit of plastering, curtains, and we're, we're pretty much there, pretty much there. I like that. I love this room. This one's a bit of a, a belter with the existing wall. It's the main hall. The amount of work we've done in this place is unbelievable. I new ceilings, chandeliers, we've restained everything, a brand new floor puffed through. When we came here, this was a suspended ceiling in line with that woodwork around the edges. And we decided to pull it down and put up a visual that represents, you know, whales, represents this room, represents the dragons that are over the clock. I deliberately hadn't looked at it when the scaff came down and sort of, you know how it is with a project, when you're watching it each day, you're not noticing the, the drastic changes, so I didn't look, and I came round the corner, and I couldn't believe it, I, I was quite choked. Partly through the job, we, we realised the back wall was unsafe in the north-west corner. We got a specialist company out to view it, and they actually said there was a chance it was gonna collapse. Now we're at a point where we've actually made it safe now. And that's another part of the building where you can walk away and think like, you know, maybe 12 months down the line, that'd be in the street, or worse. Lawrence and Signature have proved themselves. Uh, he's doing exactly what he said he was going to do. In fact, it's exceeded it. The heritage aspects, and I know because it's my passion and uh, it's what I major in, and the heritage aspect has exceeded what he had to do, and it's clearly what he wants to do now. I start to get amazed again at, at all the, the crap and the resistance, which even now, when I've had a bit of time to stand back, I still don't understand. Um, if Signature Living walked away today, uh, excuse me, it's a huge improvement already. So as with all these old buildings, the timescale set on these things, for me, are always tight. And if I think it's tight, it's extremely tight. So I've walked in in the morning, probably about eight o'clock in the morning from leaving from Liverpool. And I've walked in to see this whole hallway full of furniture. something like 150 rooms of furniture stuffed into this amazing hallway. At two o'clock 
o'clock that day, you've got 19 guests turning up to come and stay in your hotel and actually turn now to them and saying, sorry, your room's not ready because the furniture is still in the hallway. Just wouldn't do. That was probably the most scariest point for me. It's one of those things of, you know, biting down and, and getting stuck in. It is exactly what I've done every, in every single hotel we've ever brought back into play. This was no different. We just got stuck in. People running around, chickens with no heads. Don't know where that goes. All different pieces of furniture have all been mixed up. And now I'm finding bolts, I'm finding legs, tables, chairs, putting them all together. And now I'm giving direction to everyone to put things where they need to go. And to the bars going over there, everything to do with the sanitary way goes over there. The guys taking that up. Everything to do with the mirrors that are going in the rooms, they're going up on the, on the balcony. A lot of this stuff wouldn't go up the staircases because it was so tight. The lifts weren't on, so we had to sort of set up scaffolds in the grand hall and pass furniture from one level to the next level. While you're waiting, mate, just start cleaning the, the tops off so we, we can go. And rather than standing there. I've sacked three people today. Have you? Yeah, yeah. Just standing around, walking, talking, doing absolutely nothing. Yeah. You know, getting a building of this magnitude open, it's still a very difficult process. And only when you get in, involved with 125 men trying to understand where and what and how. But I do, I've done it several times. And this is what I do. I only come alive when I'm doing this. I'm not going home till this is done. Hey. <laughs> it's not even heavy. It's light. Yeah, it is something. The country is not there. It's so look. Carry it around. Wherever it goes, stay. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. We were slightly behind on the actual build itself due to the size. But another reason why we couldn't open on time was the gas connection. We had a date off the gas board to put the meter in and fell behind two to three weeks. So obviously we couldn't open a hotel with no gas because obviously gas gives you the boilers, the hot water, your kitchens and everything. So that was a big impact on us there. A lot of people worked really hard to try and hit that date. And even though we were only open in a few rooms at the time, obviously not to be able to open because we had no hot water. After all the hard work, you couldn't open the doors because of something as simple as a gas meter hadn't been installed. I was a bit deflated yesterday and we thought we're not going to get over the line. Um, but we made that decision last night about nine o'clock. You don't want an egg on your face at this point, do we? So it was the right decision. Today we opened the Cold Exchange to local residents and it has been a huge success. It's quite an emotional day for me. This all started two and a half years ago. And uh, even though we've only got 40 rooms open today, with a fair of 20 in two more weeks, it still shows that we've got a flag in the sand and we're getting it done. And it's amazing to see so many people turn up. So I'm very impressed by what I've seen so far. It's, there's a speed and also a, a good vision behind actually preserving the building and putting a new life into this area which is desperately needed. Wow, I'm so impressed. I actually live in the square, so I've watched the building kind of deteriorate over the years. You know, it's been really sad to see. So to kind of finally have somebody come in and rescue it and just to see already what's been done, it's pretty obvious that this is really happening. It'll be a commercial undertaking, but in the, in the process we save one of Cardiff's best old buildings. It's Absolutely fantastic. We love the way that the, those rooms have been done, yeah. with the whole idea of a story against the ceiling. Uh, you know, to, to see a building as old and as historical as this, and to, beautiful. to be left to, to fall to pieces was disgraceful. Yes. Well, when we have an argument, I can sort of pot around the corner and have a few drinks and stay in a room, you know. So you can uh, fall asleep watching Shirley Bassey, I mean. <laughs> what more do you want? <laughs> I've 
afraid we can't stay here tonight because there are no rooms available. He's got Cardiff by the bollocks. Welcome to the Exchange Hotel. I have long dreamt of this night that one day we would open this as a hotel and that day is upon us now. Great afternoon. I've never known so many friendly faces here when we first come. A lot of people were against us, but now they're not. Now they're for us. Stunning, stunning building. It makes me emotional when I walk in. Because this is the room where people weren't allowed to come in. The prohibition notice stopped people from coming in and now they are allowed back in. And this is a gift back to the local community, it's a gift back to Cardiff, and it's a gift back to Wales. There is no better use for a building such as this other than it being a hotel. So when you have a museum, there are parts that are closed off to you. In this building, every conduit, every corridor, you can walk down and you can see, you can visit, and you can take a picture of. Beforehand, this was a window, so it's the original window that we've turned into a doorway. This is a service door now. This is how you get your food from kitchen into main restaurant. All this wall is listed. So you're not allowed to touch it. You've got to be compliant, but you've also got to ensure that it's commercially viable. That was a dance, that would be tap dancing. <laughs> when we come here, again, if you look back, this was just completely nothing here, it was burnt down. There was no staircase, you could see from the, basically what we're standing on, all the way up to the roof. We go through to the old bank, which is now Cully's. So when we come in, if it rained outside and stopped, it'd still be raining here three days later. It's very important to me that when we open a hotel, that the hotel does not ostracise anyone. That all people from all walks of life will feel welcome when they walk in. This is the miners' room. What's really special about this room is this wall. This wall is the stonework from the slew from the mines that's been taken out of the mines and actually used as a wall here. We didn't know this wall existed until we pulled away the plaster off the wall. So as in all these buildings, you never know what you're gonna find behind a wall. And this is one of those great finds that we found here. This was covered in plasterboard and we uncovered it and then found this amazing lift. The spiral staircase, we put that back into the building. That's what used to take you down to the vault as well. This beautiful girder, I wanted to keep the same rustic feel that I had and not change it. So we've actually gone over that with clear paint, but actually that is exactly the way it was when we uncovered it from underneath the ceilings. Going through to the archway, this was burnt down in 1984 and um, so when we come it was all deadlift, this was full of trees and this was all burnt down. There was the whole floors were hanging in that wing, you stood in the basement and there was nothing there but hanging floors over that side. This point here, it was hanging toilets. And there was a hole in the floor and all that was burnt out. And obviously we've tried to restore it the best we could. We've got the ceiling back as original. That's got a collection of old woods that's been chopped into that were scarred from the fire. And new woods, so he's blended it in. The only part of the whole building where we knocked down any wall is here. And it's just five foot of wall, but it's the only part of the building that we've changed. Every other room has stayed exactly the same size. If Hilton come in here, they would have to knock down every internal wall in order to make sure that they're Cookie cutter rooms are the same. In here, we think the DNA of the building is far more important than ours. Obviously, there's a few little bits to finish off, but the building's safe and it's not going nowhere. All the hard work that the lads have done 
is now paid off. Now you can feel safe to walk away and think, we've saved the building. I'm just a custodian. This is the people's building, isn't it? It's not mine. This area was becoming derelict. You know, the apartments dropped in value. Um, but there's certainly more of a buzz, there's more people. So, um, from a resident's point of view, I have no issues. I don't really know anybody that's in opposition to it. And what I just say to them is, we'll go in there and have a look. I, I come here quite often, and, and a few of my friends are starting to come here. And the more and more we come here, it, the more and more it's uh, becoming part of the establishment. And I think that, that will only enhance this area and the people that live here. This whole area now is being resurrected because of this building. And not only is this a beacon for the area, it's almost now a tourist destination in its own right. And that's all being created from taking on a building that no one thought could be done. I mean, it's not coincidence that the building on the corner that's laid there as a piece of steel for 10 years is now being done, and that there's small cafes springing up all over the place and so on. You come see, see what the Welsh have achieved. There's only a couple of us from back home here. See what, you know, this is, this is you, this is Wales. It probably will be, well, I'm none the best hotel in Cardiff when it's done. I'm not sure what Cardiff can do now except apologise and say we were wrong, welcome. Lawrence for one needs a pat on the back for actually taking it on. And then the lads who work down there needs a massive pat on the back for all the work he's done. I really hope you enjoyed watching that video. On this occasion, we lost the battle, but hopefully with your help, we could win the war. It took a lot of time and effort to save this great two star listed building which had a prohibition notice saved upon it, which meant that the current operators at that time could no longer trade this building. We turned this grade two star list of building from dedication into a hotel, and we failed on the way, mostly due to the pandemic. We went into administration to stop our investors from coming after us through the courts. Uh, it then went into liquidation. I do believe I am the only person that can save this building.